everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here my name is Liz and today I'm sharing my complete review on the Wet n Wild Gothographic collection this is their spring 2018 collection I ordered mine on the wetnwild.com website I ordered the complete box set which I don't know how long that's gonna be available if it's still available I will link everything below that I can find but I did choose to order that set simply because it was I want to say about 50% off like, you got like a 70 something dollar value for like 35 bucks and I thought that was a really good deal and I thought it'd be fun to review here on my channel. I love Wet n Wild products. They always, they have really good quality everyday products and then they come out with really fun collections like this one and I just think that's really cool. I love it when a brand, especially an affordable brand, has both ends of the spectrum for the really creative stuff and the everyday really wearable stuff. Again, it is called Gothic Graphic. My understanding is that it is supposed to be pastel goth, which is a subculture of the goth culture. I don't know that much about it, but I do believe that they like drew inspiration from a real subculture. Calling it spring with a holographic edge, the only thing holographic about this collection is the packaging, which is absolutely beautiful. But none of these um, products actually are have like a rainbow reflect. They have multiple colors, so they are duochromatic, and they definitely are iridescent, but I do not think that any of the products in this collection qualify as holographic. I'm not a complete expert on what that means, but I'm pretty sure it means a rainbow reflect and none of this makeup has that. I am wearing a bunch of these products on my face today, and I am going to be showing you clips of me applying them. I have a different look other than this one that I'm going to show you as well in this video, but I have a full tutorial on this look that will be coming probably tomorrow. So I actually want to start with the lippies. There are four lippies that come with this collection. These are their Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Metallic Lipsticks. And they do have some metallic lipsticks released on their permanent line. I believe they recently just came out on their permanent line. I don't think that I own any of those. I really kind of now wish that I did because I want to compare the formulas. The regular liquid catsuit lipsticks I personally really do enjoy. I wear them quite often. I have a lot of the shades and I really like them as for just a regular matte liquid lipstick. The shades we have in this lippy collection are Pastel Grunge, which is a blue that has a pink iridescent glitter to it. Gunmetal Heart is this gray with, again, kind of a pinkish iridescent glitter. Gunmetal Heart is what I have on the outer part of my lip here. Then we have Death to Unicorns, which is a black with a, um, a lot of glitter in it. And then Wicked Pink is what I have on the center of my lips. And this is the pink with sort of a gold champagne iridescence to it. I am wearing a lip crayon under these, so there is that under these. I have found that these are not opaque on their own in any way. Honestly, the shades, like this blue one, the pastel grunge shade, hopefully you could see in the swatches, was really kind of disappointing. Like, that's just, that's just not really acceptable to me, honestly, like that formula. I mean, I just, I wish it was better. However, I am wearing these, like I said, over a lip crayon right now, and I actually do like them as lip toppers. I think they should probably be marketed as lip toppers. I mean, I'm not one to buy a lip topper if it's like $25, you know, from Jouer or whatever. I mean, I shouldn't say that because I probably will someday, but I would buy a lip topper from Wet n Wild, you know what I mean? Or like ColourPop. Like those are brands that I think can get away with selling lip toppers because they are more affordable. I'm going to put a little bit more of Wicked Heart on right now just to show you guys. Wicked Pink, sorry, Wicked Pink. Wicked Heart would be a cool name too. I had this on the center of my lips, but I feel like it kind of faded, so. Yeah, that's really pretty, but it's not extremely metallic. Do you know what I mean? Maybe because it dries down matte, it's not, it's not as metallic as it could be. Like, I feel like if I went in with a highlighter, I would get more of a metallic look on my lips than with this alone. These lippies are nice, and I definitely will be using them as lip toppers. Not on their own, unfortunately. They don't work like that. But to be honest with you guys, most metallic lipsticks that I own, I wear as a lip topper. It just adds a nice little oomph to a lip color. It can really change up lip colors, too. It would be fun to layer these with various fun lip colors to see what kind of combinations you could get. My two favorite shades of these would definitely be... Gunmetal Heart and Wicked Pink. I can see myself using these the most. And 
if I had to give the lippies a grade overall, I would probably give them a C plus. Next, let's talk about the liquid eyeshadows. So these are their liquid catsuit liquid eyeshadows. There are four in this collection. I only have three in my hand because I managed to lose one in the last 24 hours since filming the swatches. I have no idea how that happened. I believe it's like a white gold sort of duochrome shade and then mystic dreamer is this pink shade we have this really pretty goth tears iridescent like a blue and pink duochrome we have nyctophilia which i had to look it up it means lover of the night and nyctophilia is sort of a purplish blue deep shade Today I am wearing Nyctophilia and Goth Tears. So I applied, I started with Goth Tears on the inner corner and brought it out to my lid and then I went in with Nyctophilia on the outer V of my eyelid and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't really like Nyctophilia. It's a beautiful color and it looks beautiful and I have another... Um, look that I want to show you where I'm wearing this. So I feel like the formula of Nyctophilia is just a little bit off. It's a little dry, it's not opaque, it's a little patchy, and you can see my skin through it. Plus the, bl the blue glitter in it makes it, I think, look even more crusty. Like it accentuates the texture of the shadow, which dries crusty anyways. So Nyctophilia is not my favorite. My favorite of these is definitely Goth Tears. This one is beautiful. It's a beautiful color. It's beautiful pigmentation. It does have a tiny bit of that um, patchiness, crustiness to it, which I'm sure you guys can judge for yourself how you feel about it. When it goes on, it looks beautiful. They do dry down a little bit differently than when they first go on. When you first put it on, you're gonna be like, oh my god, that's amazing. And then it dries down a little differently, but they're still really pretty. Um, I don't think these work on their own as an eyeshadow. Today I am wearing them over eyeshadow and that's really the way that I can see myself wearing these, which is how I feel about the regular Wet n Wild liquid catsuit eyeshadows also. Most liquid eyeshadows, to be honest with you, like the Stila ones, the ColourPop ones, the glitter liquid eyeshadows, I should say, are, um, are best used as toppers over eyeshadow. They're just, they don't hold enough pigmentation to be on their own. Plus the texture can be kind of weird. So they will crease, so you have to be careful when you pu first put them on, especially if you have hooded eyes like me. You want to kind of let your eyes be closed. Maybe you're looking down while they dry. Otherwise they will crease because that's liquid eyeshadow. That's what they do. I feel like the original Wet n Wild, like their permanent line, Eyeshadow, liquid eyeshadows carry a better pigmentation, are a little bit better than these, but these are really fun colors. So if you're into the colors, if you want, you know, to just pick out one or two of your favorite colors, like I said, Goth Tears is my favorite color, then these are nice. I would give these probably a B plus. All right, next let's talk about their eyeliners. So they had three eyeliners. They are all metallic finish liquid eyeliners in this collection. I love that Wet n Wild re releases really fun, colorful eyeliners. Again, like I said, I love when affordable brands do that because it just gives us a, a chance to be creative and have fun with color and not pay so, so much money for it. So I love that. The colors we have here are Black Butterfly, which is the purple metallic, our pink Coffin, which is a light pink metallic, and Skull Prayer, which is a white metallic. Black Butterfly is what I am wearing on my eyes today as a liner. I started with a little bit of Skull Prayer and I didn't like the way it looked. Not that I didn't like the color, I just didn't like the way it looked with my eye look, so I went over all of my liner with the purple one. I can't remember these names. Black Butterfly. You know, I'm really glad they didn't go with puns this time because I'm so over puns. Unfortunately, Pink Coffin is not usable for me because the brush is completely whacked. <laughs> I can't believe I said that word. I never say that word. But it's, you, as you can see, it is really messed up. So I'm going to have to find an eyeliner brush in my collection to use Pink Coffin. When I first swatched these, I was like in awe of how nice they swatched on the hand. And I feel like they do perform really well on the eyes too. So I think these are a definite hit. Again, if you're looking for colorful eyeshadows, I would give these an A. These are really nice. They're not the most opaque, but you can layer them really well. I layered the purple one, Black Butterfly. I layered that one. A couple of times on my lid and they layered really nicely so I think these are definitely A's. Next we have a bunch of highlighters so we have two of their Mega Glow highlighting powders. We have the shade White Raven and Purple Ashes. I'm actually wearing both of these on my eyes today. So White Raven is this really pretty, it's actually very blue. It looks very white in the pan here but it has very strong blue undertone and when you put it on the skin, at least on my skin, it looks very blue. This is beautiful. This is really, really pretty highlighter. Purple Ashes does have a little bit of glitter in it, although I don't feel like that really transfers onto the skin. 
at first glance, especially when you compare the two, this one definitely stands out as having chunks of like gold or pink glitter in it. But on the skin, I don't feel like you really can see that. I do have purple ashes on my inner corner right here. And it's so beautiful. I feel like these are going to be really pretty eyeshadows. They are really pretty highlighters too. Here you can see me applying purple ashes on my skin and you do get that really pretty pink tone and then White Raven. Again, you get more of that blue more so than a white look on skin. So I really like these highlighters. They're colorful. If you're not into colorful highlighters, pass on these. But if you're looking for some good ones, these are adorable. I love the packaging. I love the fact that they have skulls on them. I think that's fun and something different. So these are an A+. They also released a highlighting stick. This is the Mega Glow Highlighting Stick in the shade Hello Darkness. This is one that I think is not going to be for everybody. I see myself using this one probably not as often as I will use the other ones. I did use it today. I some on my finger and then I dabbed it from my finger onto my skin on the high points of my face and blended it in with my finger. That worked really well. And this one again comes out very, very blue. Very similar to the White Raven highlighter shade. Those two would combine really beautifully, but I actually like this to layer with other highlighters. So if you wanted like a little bit of iridescence to your highlighter or a little bit of blue, but not too much. You could layer this under and then put whatever highlighter you want over it. Today, I put the next one that I'm going to talk about, which is the Loose Powder Highlighter, over this. And I did see a little bit of that blue coming through, just a little bit though, and I really liked it. I don't feel like this is a super intense highlighter on its own. You can see the blue color very intensely, but you don't see the highlight, the glow, very intensely. It looks almost like you're glowing, like you have a blue light shining on you. That would be the best way I could describe it. Performance-wise, it does exactly what I would expect it to do. I just don't know how much use I'll get out of it and how useful it will be to other people. I would give this a B plus. And then the last product to talk about is the highlighting powder. This is the Mega Glow Loose Highlighting Powder. I don't think it has a shade name because there's only one shade. The holes for the powder to come through are in the shape of a skull, which is so fun. At first glance, I was highly intimidated by this powder. I mean, it looks so glittery. It is so pretty, you guys. It is so freaking pretty. Look at that swatch. Even swatch with my finger, it seems a little bit chunky and a little bit glittery, but when I put it on with a brush today, like I said, over that cream stuff, it's so smooth. It is so amazing. I mean, tell me if you see any chunks of glitter because I don't. I am in awe of how beautiful and amazing this is. It is just, it just way exceeded my expectations. This product is an A+, one of the best of this whole entire collection, if you like intense highlighters, I definitely recommend you get this. Like I said, I did not notice any glitter, any chunks of glitter, any pieces of glitter. I thought I was going to, but I didn't. It's so soft. It is so beautiful. It would be a beautiful eyeshadow. It would be a beautiful inner corner highlight, brow highlight, face highlight. Just put it all over your face. I liquid catsuit liquid eyeshadow in goth tears. The metallic eyeliners in skull prayer and black butterfly. Two mega glow highlighters in white raven and purple ashes. And the loose highlighting powder. So those were the standout products. I mean, I really did like everything. Obviously, nothing was a fail, but those were the ones that I would purchase again that I would highly recommend to you guys. So yeah, that is it for this video, you guys. Let me know what products stand out to you from this collection. What are you going to buy or what did you buy? Are you going to pass in this collection? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, make sure you're subscribed. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I have been trying to do bonus videos in there too, so make sure you turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of those. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you again very soon.